الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وحده في ذاته ووحده في صفاته واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة البقرة بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون صدق الله مولانا العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي It is your turn this is the title of my sermon today it is your turn what am i talking about it's your turn if we look at this الايه المباركه and ponder upon it for a moment. This ayah, ayah number 186, is the fourth ayah after ayat al siyam Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al siyam ayah number 183, then the fourth ayah after that is this ayah, very important ayah. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي When my humble slaves ask you concerning me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ I'm very near to them. I will answer the call of those who call on me. Allah is very close to us. In one place in the Quran, He says, He's closer to us than our jugular vein. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you are. هُوَ السَّمِيعِ The one who hears. البصير, the one who sees. العليم, he knows what you want. So in Ramadan, we have prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we made so many dua. I respond to those who call on me. As long as they call on me alone, of course. We Muslims call on no one except Allah. So Ramadan was an opportunity for Muslims making dua to Allah along with everybody and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever they need. And you know what? Allah answers their call. That's how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them what they want. But there's something in return. Nothing for free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you want something from me? I want something from you. It's a two-way street. I will answer you right away. But I expect you to answer me as well. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ Now, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي So now, you respond to me. فَا Immediately, right away. فَاسْتَجِيبُ لِي I responded to you. Now, it's your turn. Now you understand what the title of this khutbah is about. It's your turn now to respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Reply to me. Respond to me. Answer my call. You called on me. I answered your call. Now I'm calling on you. You answer my call. Question is, what is Allah's call? Is it not enough, O Allah, that we pray to you? Is it not enough, O Allah, that we fast for your sake? Is it not enough, O Allah, that we give sadaqat and zakat? Is it not enough, O Allah, that we go for umrah and hajj? What else do you want from us? He wants much more. He wants much more. If you want to know what Allah wants, 
Fix your gaze on the last ruku'ah of Surah Al-Hajj. I think within the context of this sermon, that section is the most important section in the whole entire Qur'an. If you understand that section, if you digest it, and if you make a firm resolve and have the determination to fulfill the requirements of that last part of Surah Al-Hajj, then, MashaAllah, inshaAllah, you are among the prophets, the siddiqeen, the shuhada, and the salihin. Wahasuna ula'ika rafiqa. What is that section about? Actually, it's a two part section. The first part is an address to humanity. Ya ayyuhan nasu duriba mathalun fastami'u lah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا وَلَا وَجْتَمَعُوا لَهِ O people of mankind, those whom you are calling besides Allah, they used to call idols besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hubal and laat and izzah. Those whom you are calling besides Allah, they can't help you in any way. They can't create an insignificant insect fly. Even if a fly snatches something off of those idols, they are so helpless, they cannot retrieve it. They cannot get it back. How weak is the sought and how weak is the seeker? So that is a call to Iman. So that's a call to Iman. But Alhamdulillah, we are mu'mins. Alhamdulillah, that Allah raised us. Either we were born into Islam or converted to Islam. This is the biggest na'mah. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. Okay? But now, what is our call? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. That's the last two, last two ayat of Surah Al-Hajj. Now the address is to the believers. First, to humanity. Ya ayyuhal nas. Now that we are, alhamdulillah, believers, now Allah is calling us to something. What is it? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, rka'u, wasjudu, wa'abudu rabbakum. وَفْعَلُوا الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ وَوَجْتَبَاكُمْ Four imperatives, four commands in this last ayah to the believers. If you consider yourself among those whom Allah addressed, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Now pay attention and respond to Allah. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Now you know what to respond to. اِرْكَعُوا وَسْجُدُوا Number one. Bow and prostrate, literally, that's the translation. But what does it mean? Fulfill your basic modes of worship. Salah, song, zakat, hajj. That's at the bare minimum. Wafalu khair. Do good on top of that. First, at the lowest level, submit to Allah. Worship Allah. But now at a higher level, وَعَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ Above and beyond worship, ibadah. Make ibadah to your Lord. Those modes of worship are ibadat. They're not ibadah all in themselves. They are ibadat. They are part and parcel of the overall ibadah. What is ibadah? Ibadah is to submit and obey your Lord in everything. In all matters, personal, social, family, economic, in all matters, ibadah, total ibadah. In other words, stay within the circle of ja'iz and mubah, what is lawful. Do not go beyond and transgress the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had set for you. This is why... The Prophet in a profound hadith said, dunya sijnul mu'min. This dunya is a prison to a believer because it is, this believer can do anything he wants. He can drink, he can fornicate, he can commit adultery, he can play cards and gamble, he, he can go to hell. 
But no, for us believers, no, we cannot do any of these things. This is ibadah. We have to stay within what Allah had permitted for us. This is why we're prisoners in here. At dunya sijn al mu'min, this world is a prison to a believer. But we do it out of willingness, submission, surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for Allah. Ibadah, complete ibadah. But then above and beyond that, that's at the second level. At a yet even higher level, which is a bit more difficult, what else do you want from us, O oh Allah? Okay, we understand. We pray, we fast, we give zakah, we go for hajj. Okay, ibadah, we'll do our best, O oh Allah, to obey you, obey your messenger. This is what ibadah is, obedience. Worship out of obedience, complete obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No partial obedience. Complete obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now at a higher level, وَفْعَلُوا الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Do good. Do good to others. Who is a fa'al khair? Typically, a doer of good is one who helps the needy, helps those who are in need, helps the poor, shelters the homeless, and so on and so forth. All those are acts of goodness. Fa'al khair. One who does good. And Allah said, وَفْعَلُوا الْخَيْرِ Do good. Now, above and beyond those good deeds that we perform out of passion toward our fellow human beings, there's one thing you can do that nobody else can do. Because all people have a spot, a soft spot in their hearts toward people who are in need. Muslims have it, Christians have it, Jews have it, even atheists for that matter. And they do a wonderful job helping and assisting the homeless and those who are in need and the poor. But you, Muslims, how can you help humanity in a way, in a manner that none of these, these other people can help them? by helping them save themselves from falling in the pit of the hellfire. In other words, da'wah. Da'wah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to the entire humanity. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا We have not sent you, but as a universal messenger to all humanity, to all the people. Previously, Allah would send a prophet, a messenger to a particular tribe, to a particular community, to a town. But with the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, things have changed. Allah had determined and decided, this is it. Now I'm sending you, O Muhammad, to the entire mankind. So he was the link between humanity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the link between humanity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Muhammad passed away. Who fills that gap? Who is responsible for humanity to guide them toward the straight path? It is the ummah. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You're the best ummah. Allah is boasting about you. You have become the best ummah but produced to help and serve humanity, to guide humanity, to guide humanity. So, in place of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was the link between the people and Allah, it is us now who are the link between the people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the link. And if you fail to do so, we have failed Responding to Allah, Allah said, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Respond to me. This is our call. To call people toward Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who can be better in speech than one? 
who calls toward Allah. You know, we take difficult subjects in college. We become doctors and lawyers and engineers. And we learn all these difficult terms associated with each field. But yet we fail to spend some time with the Qur'an so we can understand the Qur'an, so we can preach the Qur'an to the people. Why? You know you were created for the Akhirah, not for the dunya. It's good. You're a doctor, you're an engineer, you're a lawyer. Very good. Allah likes that. You're an educated person. Allah likes that. The first word revealed to Muhammad sallallahu was Iqra, read. We are a people of knowledge. But there is another type of knowledge that we are neglecting. Revealed knowledge, the Quran. How can we call people if I don't know what the Quran is about? All I know is Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, Surah Al-Asr, Surah Al-Fatiha, a few surahs, and that's it. Well, you know what? Even then, even with this much knowledge of the Quran, it's still your duty to convey that. بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, convey on my behalf even the size of one ayah. If you know Surah Al-Ikhlas, go tell the people about Tawheed. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدَ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولِدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدًا I don't know what we will say to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala when He would ask us, I gave you this brain, I gave you this smarts. Okay, you excelled in this world, in this dunya. But why didn't you spend some time with me, with the Qur'an? The Qur'an is Kalamullah. So you can do better. So you can call the people toward me. Da'wa ilallah. Da'wa ilallah. So, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشِدُونَ Respond to me. Now it's your turn to respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe in Him so you may be guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be among those who understand our duties toward Allah and fulfill them in the most earnest way, in the most honest way, in the most sincere way. Allahumma ameen. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisabismina wa nisamat wa astaghfirullah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون When my humble slaves ask you concerning me Tell them I am very close to them. I hear them. I will answer their call. I will answer their dua. So therefore, respond to me. Ramadan came and gone. Our iman and taqwa, our iman and taqwa was raised so high. What to do with it? We have witnessed the masajid. Our masjid, mashallah, full. Now come, Ramadan is crying. Ramadan is crying. Where are the people? Hardly one sup. What are you doing with this taqwa that you have raised? What you should be doing is responding to Allah. Falyastajibuli. Right away. Now that my battery of iman is charged up to the fullest, now I have to go to work. Now I have to do whatever I can to please my Lord by responding to His call. Continue to pray. Continue to fast additional fasts. Continue to give sadaqat above and beyond zakat. And if I have an opportunity to go for hajj, I will go for hajj. Continue to probe yourself and see where you've fallen short in obeying Allah and His Messenger by making sure that your ibadah is complete to Allah. 
Continue reciting the Quran. Continue reciting and understanding the Quran. Because you understand that it is my duty to take the message of the Quran to both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. How many Muslims have gone astray? How many Muslims have become atheists? How many Muslims don't pray? Among them our own children. You know it. What do we do? We have to continue. We have to do whatever we can. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Let from among you rise an ummah, a group. Come together and study circles. Learn together. Learn the Qur'an. Call toward goodness. يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ What is khair? يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ This Qur'an is better than anything you find in this world. Anything you can collect. 114 surahs of the Qur'an better than the whole entire world and what it contains of riches. Oh, you have to learn it. We have to take the message of the Qur'an to the non-Muslims and we have to invite our children back to the Qur'an, back to Iman. It's our duty. And that is a form of jihad. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ That is one form of jihad. You know, at the first level, modes of worship. Higher level, ibadah, obedience. Third level, da'wah. Fourth level, jihad fi sabil Allah. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ عَمَلُوا رُكَعُوا وَاسْجُدُوا وَعَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ وَفْعَلُوا الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ Struggle and strive in the path of Allah. As you ought to strive and struggle in the path of Allah. Know your duty. Even taking time to learn the Qur'an with the intention to preach the Qur'an is the mightiest jihad. According to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not according to me. The Prophet was issued a, a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ Don't listen to this. Assume Allah is talking to you individually. Pretend that Allah is talking to each one of us. فَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ Don't you obey the disbelievers. The disbelievers are taking all of us to hell. Through social media, through everything else you see around you, marijuana is halal, fornication and zina has always been halal, gambling is halal. You think our kids are not influenced by this surrounding, by this toxic environment around us? Of course. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ don't you yield to the disbelievers. وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا And struggle against them. Strive against them with it. بِهِ بِهِ With what? With the Qur'an. With the Qur'an. Struggle against them through the Qur'an. Understand the Qur'an. Preach the Qur'an. This is the mightiest jihad. جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا but that requires time and effort. And we have to dedicate our lives for this job, for this task. And if we do this, like I said, you'll be among the prophets and the shuhada, siddiqeen and salihin. Don't you want to be in the company of your prophet? Don't you want to be in the company of Abu Bakr, Umar, and the great sahaba and those who came after them and the generation after them? Don't you want to be among Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib and Mus'ab bin Umair who gave their lives and were martyred fi sabilillah? Don't you want to be among the righteous people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on, on the day of judgment in the highest place in Jannah, in Jannah al-Firdaus? This is not science fiction. This is real. If you want to be there, 
then respond to Allah. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Let them respond to me. God did his part. Now you do your part. It's your turn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to fulfill our duties toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every one of them, without any hesitation. Inshallah ta'ala, Allahumma ameen. Inna Allahumma laikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayu aladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama sallayta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima anna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barak ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama barakta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima anna ka hamid. ثم جيد اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا واجمع ذات بيننا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على عدوك وعدونا اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن اللهم اجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا واجعله حجة لنا يا رب العالمين آمين 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 وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين